Hi guys, and welcome back to another painting video. So today I thought I'd showed you guys the process of this particular piece. So if you've been following me on Instagram, you would have saw little um, sneak peeks or actually the, the finished piece is already on my Instagram. So you probably already saw this if you follow me there. Um, so today I'm painting 17 stool gown with a kind of like a bouquet focusing a little bit on sunflowers and a flower crown that has sunflowers. So as you can see in my sketchbook, I have a bunch of different sketches, just planning out ideas and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So I did a little bit of some loose pen sketches of the bouquets that I saw on Pinterest. And then... I did a few of different angles of Dolgam so I could figure out how I wanted to position him um, for this particular piece. And then after when I had a few roughs done, I decided to take it into Procreate, as you can see here, and basically flesh everything out. And this is what's going to provide me with a clean sketch before I transfer it to the watercolor paper. So as you can see, I was putting as much detail as I could and making sure that things could be as clean. And then I did a quick mock-up of the colors, which I didn't follow like too closely, but um, I think it's a good representation of what I wanted to do. Um, as you can see, I, this is the watercolor paper that I'm using. Any of the materials that you need to know about this piece will be listed in little cards or flags above, as well as in the description. And um, basically, for anyone who's not interested of watching, basically, or listening to me, I guess, um, not interested or just for some reason don't really like these kind of longer videos for watercolor speed paints, or not speed paints, watercoloring videos, you can watch a five minute version of this, which will just have purely have like background music and just a really like fast sped up version. So you can see start to finish of the whole completed piece. That's gonna be an unlisted video in the description. So yeah, if you're interested in watching that, um, feel free to go in the description and find that. So yeah, so let's see. After I had the sketch complete on my iPad, I did have to print it out onto tracing paper. And then after tra putting it onto tracing paper, I used my Gaumon um, light tracing pad. And that's what I'm going to be using to basically transfer my lines to the watercolor paper. So basically I put the tracing paper underneath my watercolor paper and over top the tracing light pad so I can see all my lines. I used a normal mechanical pencil with HB lead and use that to do the basically the clean sketch so I know where I'm going to be laying down my paints. So right now, as you can see, I'm adding a light wash of yellow to indicate I wanted to have warm light coming from the top left. Um, I do a poor job of preserving this for the most part, except for like in his hand because um, I did leave it quite untouched. But for the most part, a lot of it got covered. So there's not really a reason for me to put that in the beginning. So another problem I've been having using this particular paper, like usually I don't have too much of an issue using this paper. It usually works pretty well. Um, it kind of lets the water sit on top for a little bit. So you can definitely like layer paints and mix colors like really seamlessly. But I'm not sure if it's because I am a little too impatient with watercolor painting that I'm struggling with this. As you can see, I added this darker peachy orangey tone on top of the base color and the base color wasn't completely dry at this point and because of that um you're gonna see that i'm gonna get this really blotchiness like around his cheek area and that's due to basically me putting too much water into a place that didn't like that was still wet so a lot of the pigment and the water were pushing each other basically and then leaving this weird um almost like white a, like a white ring around where the new color was placed because it was the, too much water onto like wet paint it's gonna start to push away the other color basically and leave the paper kind of like white or whatever basically so i don't know i guess it's just because i didn't let it dry so the paper was or not the paper the color is being lifted off the paper basically so eh. um i'm gonna struggle with the skin quite a bit because of that but in other areas like the foliage and like the you know like the leaves the flowers and stuff I think turned out pretty well um, yeah so I just started off adding a lot of my yellow tones first because it is the lightest value other than white 
so I did add it to the majority of the areas in the foliage. As you can see, I started adding in the darker shadows after the skin has finally dried. And then during that area, I had to quickly pick up a little bit of like a purple color so I could bleed that in a little bit more seamlessly. Um, which is what I usually like to do and usually um, can achieve it pretty well But for, because I'm so impatient recently with watercolor painting I've been doing a lot of like stupid mistakes and Now that I'm doing this voiceover. I started another painting that you guys will probably see Maybe next week, maybe two weeks from now. We'll see when I upload it But um, it's one of the eight from 17 and I did the same thing where I didn't wait for the skin to dry Uh so his skin's a little patchy, so I'm just going to have to slowly build up value again, cover up some of the areas so I can get more flat, um, nice, seamlessly blended areas for the skin. Because for the skin, I do like having, for the most part, pretty smooth transitions between like any of my base colors to like the shadow colors um, and all that. As you can see, like sometimes I don't leave it as blended so like in the ear area or like later on under the chin is going to be pretty much of a harsher shadow just because there's not really a point of leaving it super soft um because i would like to have like a nice indication that there's a shadow there so as you can see i'm slowly touching up the skin area adding a little bit more um pigment a little bit more color back into the skin because it's a little dull at the moment probably because like I only did one pass of color and the color is like fairly pale so I think I could have got away with making the skin a little bit darker off the bat then I wouldn't have to add so much layers on top so I could have prevented some of the issues that I had earlier but I really do like adding like blues and purples into the skin especially if the skin's a little bit more of a warmer toned adding a lot of cooler shadows look like they really pop from it so i really like doing that oh okay so i'm attempting to basically add more shadows to his face so the problem with this is that i'm not used to coloring side profiles that often i've done a few digitally and I usually make the cheekbone like more prominent so that it's like a little bit of a highlight or like it looks like it's popping out a little bit more. But because I was doing this in watercolor, I have to add shadows to the areas. And as you can see, that cheekbone area looks a little um, weird. I knew I screwed up, so I have to let it sit and dry before I can start to lift off the color again. And then I will attempt to put a little bit more of a shadow color. See, as you can see, if I blot it, you're going to see like a like a bit of a more of a white spot there. And like where the cheek is, you can see where it dried weirdly because I was pooling water there, which isn't ideal. So I was doing all these dumb mistakes like right off the bat. This is, I don't know, a lot of things like I could have avoided if I took it more slowly. I think in terms of like time-wise, mm, the painting took about three and a half hours three and a half to four hours i think um in the speed paint version you would see that i've been using my hair dryer to dry the skin area because i was getting super impatient now usually i don't like doing that i only use it if i have the whole page pretty much wet and i need to work on it immediately um but because i was filming this and oh my god i'm like congested right now Okay, so because I was filming this, I felt pressure that, you know, I don't want people to think like, holy crap, like she sucks at watercolors because of how patchy it is, especially in the beginning. So I wanted to speed things along and basically use the hairdryer to dry things so I could correct the mistakes. I should have done that. I should have just, you know, took everything slowly, try to take the pressure off and stuff. Um, so for the foliage, um, because I like working with the warmer light coming from the top left usually, I decided to lay down like a golden yellow color at the top and then, or like closer to the left side I guess, and then slowly bleed in more of a sap green and then eventually I will make it into much more of a cooler green, um, just to indicate that, you know, it's not getting as much sunlight there, so, yeah. 
Um, for the most part, the end result um, looks really nice actually. I actually really like it. Um, there's an issue with like the proportioning of his shoulders to his head. So I think it made more sense if I raised his shoulder, or like, not his shoulder, I guess it would be like his shoulder blade to back area a little bit um, more outwards and a little bit higher because it seems like, it makes it look like, how am I saying this? It makes it look like his shoulder is really small compared to like, you know, his head size and stuff. And a part of it is because like, where I have it sketched out and when I printed it, I printed it a little bit too large so when I transferred it to the watercolor paper, some of it got cut off. And then I made a second mistake is that this piece is supposed to be 8.5 by 11 or at least on an 8.5 by 11 sheet but I accidentally grabbed my 8 by 10 sheet and yeah, so basically I had to crop in a little bit more again even though yeah, I just didn't want to reprint my my sketch again, so I decided to just use the sketch that I had and just make stuff cropped off. I think it's kind of okay as long as I framed his um, his whole figure nicely because I was having issues trying to fit it nicely without having too many things cut off. Um, so like, I think in the initial sketch, there was a little bit more of the bouquet on the left side as well as there's supposed to be a little bit more space above his head because his flower crown is really close to touching the edge of the where I have it taped off um, which causes a little bit too much tension between the edge and his flower crown basically. I've been trying out something on Procreate or not Procreate uh, there's another app called Vizref so this has been recommended to me before in the past as well as like one of my friends uses it and I've seen some other professional artists like really like this, especially in conjunction with um, using Procreate. So I decided to, it is a paid app, but I feel like for me, it's more worth it because the way how I like to work in Paint Tools Sci is to always have my references in a separate canvas. And I would have that canvas next to my working canvas. So I would have my references on one canvas, whatever I'm drawing on another canvas. So it's like, like it's side by side and I can easily see it without having to, I guess like move around. Um, I know some people put their references directly onto their canvas. And for me, it doesn't make sense to work that way unless you're working super general. And then when you're working specific, you're not looking at your reference as much because if I have to keep zooming in and out and then keep panning over to my references, I think that would drive me insane. Um, so having Vizref on the side, like I have it on my left side of my iPad and then I have Procreate open. So it kind of gives me the same feeling of using Paint to the side, which is really nice. Um, and the reason why I brought that up is because um, the bouquet that I have for Dogyam and his flower crown were technically from pictures that I saw from Pinterest. So I think you saw in like in the beginning, in, in my sketchbook, I had these two really loose like pen drawings of these bouquets. So they were just gonna be like one-off doodles because I just really like the bouquets. But because of the sunflowers and stuff, it just kind of reminded me of Dogyam. And I decided to kind of like dig around for more references. And then I decided to take the references and put them into Vizref because I knew I wanted to do the sketch um, of Dogyam in Procreate before I started painting. So yeah, I just compiled a bunch of sketches. I compiled a few um, references of Dogyam, so like for hairstyle, um, clothing, for face shape, like the nose and stuff, like just to get the more accuracy, I guess. And one problem I had was that uh, the bouquets that I was drawing, if you remember seeing them at the beginning, they were facing like forward, like the sunflowers were all facing like basically forward towards like me i guess like how do i explain this it was facing just forward it's like a flat on angle it's just straight on basically it's a straight on angle and um the way i knew i wanted to do this particular piece is that i wanted to do dogem's profile for sure like 100 percent, because i really love his the arch of his nose um and his nose shape um it's just like not only that it's just very like easily recognizable that it's Dogyam. So I know I didn't want to have to stress about 
figuring out how to draw his nose from like a straight on view so I knew drawing it in profile would be more recognizable a little bit easier for myself and the composition worked better in my brain to do it this way the way how I have it if I had to do it straight on it would have to be like his arms like cradling the bouquet which I wasn't too happy with because I didn't want it to cover just like the whole center part and then having like his arms and shoulders kind of just exposed it just looks a little weird I wanted to have a lot of foliage but I didn't want to draw like a bazillion bouquets or anything or like a detailed background of flowers so I had to basically so I don't know, maybe I should see if I can find my references and then put them up on the screen so you can see it. That or you can just refer to the beginning of the video, but basically I had to just rack my brain around um, what kind of plants and flowers I wanted from that bouquet to be in this piece. Because as you can see, I had to turn the sunflower sideways. I had one baby sunflower facing towards us just to give an indication that these are sunflowers and... I wanted to make it a little bit more obvious and it kind of fit the composition better if I had, you know, two or three sunflowers a little bit more visible in the composition, at least for the bouquet itself. Um, and then for the flower crown, it was kind of like the same thing. I think the girl that I saw wearing the flower crown, she was like facing forward, like straight on, but she's like looking down a little bit. So once again, I just have to take what I liked from the bouquet and then draw it from a side view with the best of my knowledge. So yeah. So I did have a bunch of references and stuff into Vizref and I'm doing the same thing with my D8 one. I'm actually really happy with the D8 one right now. Um, I just need to really push the colors a little bit more, but so far his hair, really nice i i really like it especially like from far away his hair looks really glossy so i think i did an okay job on that i just need to touch up his face fix the flowers and stuff is this a little bit difficult for me because like dogam's piece is very much like earthy tones oh wait this is one of my favorite parts actually of the painting so i love doing these little dots and like this kind of a texture for sunflowers i do this in like digital paintings too and i think i've done this once or twice with watercolors before but basically you block in like a fuzzy shadow and then you put these like stray dots and then you clean your brush and then you kind of like meld them together by kind of like blurring some of the edges so that some of them you know kind of blur together and some of them are kind of like stand off alone it dries really nicely and then when you layer your second and third layer of like the color to get the shape and the depth of the center of the sunflower it looks really cool i really like it i don't know i just really love um being able to do textures especially of like things that are like puffy or fluffy i think it's really fun um yeah that's just a weird tangent but like um for the deep piece it's a different color palette than Dogem. So Dogem has a lot of like earthy tones, warm colors, and kind of like like a lot of gold and like kind of warm greens. Um, for Date's piece, it's a lot of like black and blue with like stark white. So I'm trying my best to kind of push the contrast in that one because I really want the flowers to really pop because the flowers that I have are a little bit like white and a little translucent. So I have to try my best to do this. Um, the one I like about dogams is like the foliage I do for the bouquet is like just it just looks really dense, so I really like it. Um, I was struggling with line art a bit in the ear, as you can see, I was using too wet of a brush, so um, a lot of the line art turned out pretty thick, uh, which I don't really like. <laughs> I definitely prefer the thinner line work. So. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Um, so basically, for the foliage, how I tackle these kinds of flowers, I know this isn't probably like the best way to do it, but it's the way I like to do it. Um, especially if you know how the paint dries and how many times you can layer it and stuff, you can probably do this pretty easily. So I usually put down my base colors first, which was that yellow to green gradient basically throughout the whole piece with a little bit of white areas and stuff. And then after when it's completely dry, I take a pretty dark color and try to knock back any of the 
shapes that I know are supposed to be in shadow and this helps me figure out different shapes of the foliage like especially like where the leaves are so I know where I want the leaves to be on top and then anything that's like underneath will be this dark deep green and then later on I'll go back in and use more of a dark like bluish green color to push it back even more so as you can see you can see the leaves a little bit more Oh, I switched to the flower crown. So I do something similar with the flower crown, except for this is more akin to like line work, just because there's not too much to push back um, because the flower crown isn't as dense as the bouquet. So, yeah, I really like that sunflower at the top. I think it looks really nice. It looks really cute, I guess. Adding back a little bit of yellow um, just to deepen up the sunflower petals before I accidentally make them too light. Um, yeah. Another reason why I do like doing this method for like, especially like for green and foliage is because I like to establish my lights and my darks, like my lightest lights and my darkest darks, like right off the bat. It makes it easier for me to indicate shadows and my midtones so that I don't accidentally make my shadows and midtones too dark because if I make my shadows and midtones a little too dark, it's hard to continuously make them darker to the point where I don't want to be using black to indicate something that's like underneath everything. I just don't really like it. So me doing the kind of this dark kind of evergreen green color kind of helps me establish that first of all. So now you can see I'm adding a little bit of yellow to some of the white areas and these little fluffy um, I don't know what these are. I've seen them like in several different bouquets, especially if they have yellow as one of the main colors. It's like these, they kind of look like dandelions, but like they're like perfect spheres and they look super cute and they look super fake, but <laughs> and I really like them. I think they look really cute. Ah, in the bouquet, they had a little bit of like pine cones. So I did throw two of them in there just because I would like to keep it as earthy as possible. Um, I will darken up the pine cones a little bit so that they don't blend too much with his sweater color. Um, I wasn't sure what color I wanted to do his sweater initially because I believe in my mock-up, I think it was even more pale in comparison or it was a little bit more green. But I decided to go with more of a yellow ochre goldish color. Um, I just thought it would fit better just because of the background color I also wanted to do. Um, kind of more of a pale color so I needed something to contrast at least a little bit with the background. So I'm adding more of the darker tones so I can start seeing a little bit of more of the shapes. I just think it looks really nice once you be able to like once you're able to actually see the different shapes it's much easier to differentiate the different um, kind of like layers especially if you're doing foliage I think it's really nice to create that nice sense of depth I feel like I'm just rambling like I'm talking about nothing at this point um, yeah fun fact this is actually my third time doing the voiceover I was an idiot and I did the first voiceover I didn't really like it I only went like maybe 12 minutes in and then I stopped it and then the second time I did the voiceover, I did the complete voiceover, but then it wasn't recording. So I decided to take a break. So this is the day after I did those two voice recordings because I didn't want to do a repeat of three things I've already said in a row. Oh, so this is the color I chose for the background. I believe I used the same color as his shirt, but then I added more of the lavender color that I have from Holbein into the mix and then really diluted it with water to get this kind of like beigey, it's like a dusty, I don't know how to explain the color, you guys can see it on the screen. Um, basically using that color as if it's like a wall behind Dogam. So I kind of have it, like the composition as if Dogam is standing to get like almost like to get his picture done basically and he's standing near a wall because I'm gonna have a shadow being casted on the wall behind him so you'll probably see that in a bit but basically that shadow is gonna be similar color to the shadow color I did under his neck which is more of a cooler color and I think it matches a little bit better um, yeah so now I'm working on his sweater 
and just deepening up the color a little bit because after I put in the background color, I was like, oof, I don't want these to be too similar in value because this watercolor is a little bit darker than what I have for the background, but um, I would like to make it a little bit darker, which um, in the end, I make the bouquet a lot darker than his sweater, which I think really fits. Hope you guys don't mind like how long this video is. I have like a fun time editing this kind of a style of a video as well as looking at the five minute version of this like the speed paint styled one. So if you guys have preferences, you can definitely just choose one or the other. I think moving forward, I am going to be doing it like this. So I think for watercolor pieces, I will be editing it down to around half an hour of real time footage of me painting and doing a voiceover with a little bit of music and all that jazz. And then if that's not your kind of style of video you like to watch, but you like watching my watercolor, like watercoloring videos, I will make sure to always list the unlisted, um, like five minute version of it in the description so you guys can still keep up with, um, basically the process, but just seeing it from start to finish without any cuts. Um, yeah. So working on his hair. Um, so I try to, I always try to attempt this, especially if the person has a lot darker hair, is try to bleed in um, either other colors from the composition or bleed in, in this case, because Dogam has a bit more paler skin compared to his hair color, I like to bleed in the skin color into the hair just to make the bangs look a little softer. Um, yeah, I actually have no idea what to talk about right now. Hope you guys don't mind such a rambly video like this. Got a lot of fun working on this for the most part. I think I've mentioned in other videos that I was having confidence issues with my watercolor pieces and I think it's just me not taking the time to actually slow down. I think I probably mentioned that in a different video as well is that I've been getting very impatient. So it might be because like in the past, I was like super confident with how I did watercolors, like with the process and stuff. So I was taking too many shortcuts to try to like basically push out more and more watercolor pieces because like I have fun working on them and I enjoy posting like a lot of my watercolor work because I do enjoy it. But I think because I was just feeling the pressure of needing to post more traditional work, that I started to take so many shortcuts to speed up the process that basically I wasn't enjoying it as much probably because I started to eliminate the parts that I really liked and I find watercolor for the most part like fairly therapeutic because a lot of it's just like almost monotonous um, layering of color I have fun mixing colors because it's always fun to challenge yourself to mix certain colors to get certain looks um, playing around with texture in this one was also very fun, which I don't get to play around too much with my D8 one. His is very much like slick and like sleek, but for the most part, I really like it. I just have to find a way to line his particular flowers and the other one. I don't know. There's a lot to do. Oh, um, I don't know if I cut this out, but I guess I started to add like the mid-tone shadows underneath like some of the leaves and stuff so you guys can see that... Um, there's a little bit more depth and it looks a little less flat. It still looks a little flat because the leaves itself don't have that much dimension to them. But I'm already moving on to doing the line work because similar to how I like to do my darks first, like my darkest darks as one of the first things to do, um, adding line work helps me also um, place the midtones because I can always layer shadows over top the whole thing. As long as I'm careful enough, I'm not lifting any of the color. Um, so I think I believe I do that after I've done the line work, I'll add a layer of a bluish purple over top of some of the leaves to push it back a little bit more. At least for this one, I don't think I was as lazy as some of my other pieces because I did use two different um, brushes at least. So I did use my size 12 Artist Loft Necessities brush and I used that to do a lot of the base colors as well as like 
I think I used it for a lot of the skin color too, and it might be the reason why I struggle with skin. Um, I don't use those set of brushes as much anymore, so I think I'm just not used to how much water they hold. Um, the Raphael Kalinske is kind of like my go-to brush now. It's like mop-like, but it has like a really sharp point, so I can get fairly large washes or like consistent washes but also like because of that point as long as you get a good paint to water ratio you can get really thin line work as you can see sometimes i can achieve really thin line work and sometimes they can't so it's just like it depends on how well you can do um, brush control basically and making sure like basically when you're looking at your brush when lining i always look at the tip because basically you just want to make sure the tip is the only thing touching the paper so you're not applying too much pressure um, and as well as you need a stiff wrist and a loose arm so you can easily make some like nice seamless um, flowy lines without like making your hands really shaky so I'm basically just cleaning up a lot of this stuff by doing the line work and making sure that these are all clean, they kind of stand out, things make sense. I didn't do line art for everything in this step, I don't think. I did all the dark greens first, and as you can see, I moved directly to the hair because I think I'm going to be using the similar color to the hair to be used for the sunflowers and any of the lighter colors in the bouquet or in his flower crown. So I'm going to probably dilute or add a little bit more of like a yellow ochre or one of my lemon yellows to make the color a little bit more of a yellowy brown so I can use that to line the rest of the flowers. It looks pretty dark actually, the line art color that I choose. That was like the longest pause. I don't... I'm surprised I didn't edit that out. Um... But yeah, um, basically when I was doing the flowers, because I was using the brown color I was using for his hair and then I diluted it a little bit, I added a little bit more of a yellow ochre and the lemon yellow, the color, or not the color, the paint was a little bit too wet on my brush, so I wasn't getting thin lines, I was getting these thick lines. And when I look back at the piece, it actually doesn't look that bad, but I think it would have been better for me to do a little bit of darker and thinner lines. It would have achieved probably a more cleaner look for the most part. I think it's okay. Um, I think it worked out for some of the smaller um, yellow areas just because I think as the pigments and the water dried in my brush, I started to get more thinner lines because the paint to water ratio is a little bit better at that point. Yeah, so I think, I don't know if I mentioned this in my Persona video, but I think I want to do two different watercoloring series. So hopefully I'll be able to post more watercoloring videos in the future. Obviously, it probably won't be as abundant because it does take me a longer time as well as I do scrap a lot of the watercoloring videos. But hopefully if I work on larger pieces that I'm more dedicated to, I, will, I won't scrap them. So, yeah, but the two series I want to do is the one with Masaki. So basically him is a tiny little chibi and he's doing stuff with flowers. So either he's carrying them, transporting them, planting them, who knows what he's going to do. Um, but I like to do a bunch of different ones because I think the flowers that I would like to paint would fit better with Masaki. Basically like him and the flowers solely in one piece so I can focus on a comfortable character along with some pretty flowers kind of thing. I think I'd be really cute. I think I've explained that in a different Masaki video. And then the second mini series for watercolors I would like to do is just 17 with flowers. I like the idea of doing like portraiture. Well, I guess in this case, stylized portraits. I used to do a lot of realism for watercolor, but I stopped doing realism for quite a while now. Just think it doesn't bring me that much joy, and it's a lot more stress of getting likeness. So, yeah, you can probably scroll back in my Instagram and find them. I did a lot of like Wanu, Jonghan, D8. I did one of S Coops that I really liked. 
um, Dino, Woozy. I pretty much did one for every member, except for I think I didn't do Sungwan or Mingyu. Um, or Dogyam, I think. Mingyu, Sungwan, Dogyam. I think are the only ones that I didn't do. Like a portrait with flowers, probably. But I would like to do like stylized portraits with them with flowers and stuff and just different like color palettes I would like to play around with. So far, Dogyam's turned out really nice and I think d is coming out really nice. I just really need to push the values like I said before and make a little bit more contrast but I really like it. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna work on Mingyu next so I can do 97 line together and yeah. In terms of the video, I am adding a little bit of highlight detailing in these little white cluster of dots just to give a, um, the bouquet a little bit more of a delicate feeling. So adding these little dots because I see like a lot of little flowers, like I think it's similar to Dragon's Breath and there's some other like flowers out there that have these really dainty small flowers that kind of are part of the bouquet and I think they're really pretty. So I decided to use white gouache to do a little bit of that as well as a little bit of white dots just overall in the whole piece. Kind of like as if, you know, like dust is falling and light captures them. It looks kind of magical, even though it's dust, but I think it looks really cute. So the last few clips is just, I guess this one's me peeling the tape. Um, I'm not gonna do the peel porn thing just because I didn't record the sound as well as I didn't wanna record super close to the painting itself just in case I accidentally rip the piece and like knock over my webcam or something. I don't know. Um, but I think this looks really nice. I think it looks great actually. I'm really happy with it. And like the amount of love you guys gave it, especially on Instagram and on Twitter, makes me really happy. I'm gonna take time to reply to everybody soon on those two posts. So yeah, thank you very much guys for liking this one. I had a lot of fun working on it. Definitely a confident booster in terms of painting, which is carrying on to my D8 painting, which I'm super excited for. So hopefully I can keep this momentum up and continue to paint. Obviously I'm still gonna be doing digital videos and stuff. So yeah, next week's video is going to be a little bit different. So hope you guys will enjoy that one. Even though it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be a weird video. As you can see, I had some lines that were covered up by the tape because I knew I didn't want to reach the edge of the paper because my drawing was bigger than the paper. So I tried my best to stop um, before the edges, but I had a little bit of stray pieces. So I had to erase those before I could take photos of it. But yeah, here are a few close-up shots. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to me ramble a little bit. I'm gonna have to cut a lot of this audio because I'm congested. It's crap right now. So yeah, thank you very much for watching guys and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!